Hello everybody, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're joining from. If you're live, thank you very much. If you're on the upload, thank you very much. You can get in contact with me either way. I'm here all the time. Okay, it's been a good week. Got lots to share with you. Lots of people asking questions about FTP, so I thought, hey, let's do a video about FTP. I'm going to be careful with what I say. I want to introduce develop your thinking process with FTP, Functional Threshold Power. We're coming to this video with a little bit of knowledge from it. We've talked about it before. You've got some interest in it. You may even have done one or a hundred tests around FTP. So we're going to talk about testing. We're going to talk about the importance because there is importance with the number. But I'm going to get you thinking about the concept of how we arrive at the number and what the number is, what we identify with the number and why we use it. Sure, there's wonderful videos on the internet showing you how to do a test and then create things from the test. But why are we doing it? Let's look deeper. Let's dive in. Let me share you some of my test data over the last week. Yes, the old fucker has been on the bike again. Yes, and we're making a comeback. And I'm going to do another test tomorrow, so I've got another video to show you. But I'm going to go through the process with you. Hey, how's everybody been? You can get in touch with me through the local... The local, not on the fucking radio, Jesus. <laughs> through the usual means. I just want to shout out, big thank you. I've had so many uh, messages this week. David, I'm talking to you. Gavin, yeah, are you smiling and spinning? Jude, how are you doing? Race off at the weekend. We can still punch through. No goals. Robert, Bobby, <laughs> is it the same person that keeps messaging me? Stephen, Mary, Joe, Graham, Chris, Keith, Morag, Simon, Gary. So many messages, people. I just love it. So many people joining Patreon. So many of you have sent me messages that you've done the fat for fuel. Entering week four, some of you. Wow, I've got more to share on that program. If you don't know what it is, go back and check the fat for fuel video. I have got some more workouts coming in that area and I've got a beautiful course coming as well. I'm going to teach you more about it because you haven't even scratched the surface with what you can do. Thanks for all the comments from the video yesterday, time of putting this out. I believe it was called short workouts, 30 minute workouts. Wow, we have got more to do with what I call layering. We're going to make cakes. Oh, we're going to make some beautiful workout cakes. In a couple of weeks, we'll start sharing live workouts. Fuck me, coach. Are you going to be okay? Well... I'm 52. I believe I've got another 63 and a half years left in me. Yep, I'll be the oldest man. I'm waiting for the 100 plus category because I reckon I can I can be good at that. I can, I, I can you know, get back to my prime in that 100 plus category. Go for the 100 plus years hour record as well. Oh, I've got it all in my diary. Don't you worry. <laughs> okay, folks, if you're new here, don't worry. I may swear from the odd time. Uh, that just usually means I'm either nervous or I am a little bit more Scottish than normal. Don't worry, I don't mean any offence. Things I say, they'll go in one ear and out the other. If you can't understand my accent, then don't worry. There are subtitles, but the subtitles are even more confusing than the fucking language. Okay, so... Some people asked a little bit about me. Hey coach, tell us more about you before we dive in every week. We want to get to know you. We enjoy... Well, what do you want to know? Okay, there's there's not much to tell because most of it would have to go on an adult channel. <laughs> My humour is a little bit warped. But anyway, look, lots of coaching experience. And I'm going to introduce some points that I'm going to bring up uh, in the next few weeks. One is the next test. I'm going to be sharing the work I do with InSync and we'll do some metabolic testing. That's really clever, okay? It's not for everybody but I'll share a little bit. I'm going to be sharing some work that we're doing with the Breakaway app. Have you heard of it? You work with Garmin? You know the guys at Garmin Slipstream? Remember that fantastic team? I'll be sharing some work on that over the next week. So loads coming up. But anyway, coach, FTP. Yeah? Are we ready for this? Because FTP is, hmm, it's a mindfuck. Okay? So let's start with the test. Okay? So what I want to do in this episode Talk about the test, talk about variations of the test, talk about what we produce from the test, how to do the test, 
how to do the test, not what numbers you need to aim in terms of time, what type of test, how to perform the test. Because in my experience, there isn't enough clear guidance on getting an accurate uh, test protocol. Because if you did some of the tests in the lab that I've seen, you'd be told to go home and come back in two or three days and perform it again because you're not testing accurately. Okay, now, folks, hey, for those of you who don't know me, I do have my glasses and we need to hit that, put the battery in. You see, this is live. People say to me, why don't you watch other lives, coach, and watch how professional other people are? And I say, I do. And I don't give a shit. You want to come to a show where somebody is unscripted. Look, I've got one page. <laughs> These are things that I said I must talk about tonight. Okay. So I'm being on. But I've got my glasses on. Okay, they're my reading glasses. I don't actually have my driving glasses. I have my beer goggles, my cycling goggles. Uh, yeah, beer goggles are a true thing. They exist in all countries around the world. Men and women have them. Coach, get on with it. Fuck's sake. Now, the test. I want you to remember in that word, the test. The test. Think about the immediate behavioural response, the emotional response that that word conjures up. The test. Worst test I ever did was my fucking driving test. Oh my God. I wanted to punch the man in the face. It pulled with rain. I couldn't work the window wipers. I passed. How did I pass? I think because I didn't run anyone over. But anyway, I want you thinking about the test. I've given you a little secret there. The test, the test, okay? So the FTP test, functional threshold power, is a test we're going to use. It will give us a score that we should be able to replicate over 60 minutes. Not many people do the 60-minute test. Why? Because it takes 60 minutes. It's hard to pace something for 60 minutes or so we think. Most people do a shortened test, the 20-minute test. This is therefore taken as an average at 95%. We remove 5% from the test. On average, somewhere around 12 to 15 watts for most people. We can perform this in apps such as Swift, Trainer Road, Walk Bike. There are many of them out there. It's the 20-minute test that I see causing a lot of confusion because it can be wrongly done. I titled this this chat is your FTP fake. I want you to think about what your FTP is. Without me telling you, I want you to think, why do you do the test? What does FTP tell you right now? Okay, think about that. You don't have to shout out. I can hear you, okay? You don't have to make a comment about that, but think. Okay, so start with that term, the test, emotional response immediately. The last test you did. Why? Okay, now, there is other. There are other tests. One of the most popular ones now is a shorter test called the RAMP test. We've done RAMP tests since the 1980s, my boy. Okay. Now, the RAMP test comes in two forms. You have a light test or uh, what's normally called the standard test. And that normally uh, has a starting point at 100 watts. We would start riding at and then we would increase by 15 to 20 watts. Most apps have 20 watts, some have 15. Each minute you would rise by 20 watts until the rider could not ride anymore. We would like a rider to get at least six minutes. Normally I would like them to get 10 minutes. Okay, but six minutes, usually a good uh, level to get to, okay, to get an accurate score. Okay, the light test, ideally for beginners or, or what is some apps suggest, the lighter rider. Mm, I would question that. I would say the experience of the rider with tests. Uh, this would start at say 50 to 60 watts and go up by 10 watts per minute. Now, is one of them more valuable than the other? Well, actually, yes, it is. In a purely testing scenario, the RAMP test would be the test that I would ask any beginner to do first. The reason for that is there are no preconceptions of a sustainable effort. There is no behavioural response required. You just ride at 100 watts an increase every minute until you cannot ride anymore. So you, do not, you don't have to have a history. So if you're in a, a position whereby you are a beginner and you've maybe started and you've done a 20-minute test, maybe it would be more ideal for you to do a ramp test. And then from that score, 
How do you work out the ramp test? You take what's called normally taken from the final minute, but most people will not complete a minute. It's not as tidy as that. So we take what's called the maximum minute, MMP, maximum minute power, which equates to something else we call maximum aerobic power. But I'm not going down that line tonight, folks. We could talk more about tests in future. But that score is then calculated, and I say loosely, around about 75% of that will give us an FTP number. A number. Okay, now for some people, it may range down to 70%, maybe 72%. And for some, it may be 77, 78. So it, it's a range. Yes, now if you've listened to me long enough, you know that FTP is a range. For some people, 20. For others, 30. A little bit more. Round about, let's say, 30 watts. 15 watts above your number, 15 watts below your number. A range. But we need a number, don't we? Because if you're using an app, it's a simple way. I am not having a go at many of these apps. They're fantastic. They give us a starting point. But once you've done a ramp test and you have a score, for example, let's call it 200 watts, this gives you a response to start a 20-minute test. 200. Agreed? Dead, sim dead simple. Because where we start the 20-minute test is a lot more important than many people think. Way more important than what I've seen in some of the test data. And I'm going to explain in this episode with some pictures, etc. Uh, some good tests and some bad tests. Because there are bad tests, okay? Just because you get to the finish doesn't make it a good test. And this is why it may be a fake FTP. Yeah? So, come on, keep thinking. Test. What's that doing to you? Think of the last test you did. Think of how you executed the test. Could you give yourself a form score? Could you give yourself feedback, a review, how you did the test? Did you do the man in the mirror 24 hours later and go, I could have gone harder. I could have paced that better. Did you do all that bullshit? Yeah. Okay. Maybe you've done several tests. Maybe you've never seen an improvement within your range for a year, two years, three years. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about investment versus return. Okay. So testing, got an idea, FTP, you use it, you create zones. You know your zones, zone one, zone two, your sub-threshold, your VO2 max, your anaerobic capacity. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. What the fuck do they all mean, coach? Okay. Surely I just need to know how fit I am. I need a score. Give me a number. Give me a medal. Give me a certificate for completing two weeks of training. <laughs> gimme, gimme, gimme. The Muttley Syndrome. Do you remember that? Who's old enough to remember that? What was the cartoon called? Penelope Pipstock or the Ant Hill Mob? Dick Dastardly and his dog Muttley. Okay. Extrinsically motivated was that dog. He just wanted medals. Okay. Didn't give a shit about the intrinsic value of trying to uh, kill that poor girl in her car. <laughs> Just wacky races. Thank you very much. Wacky races. Peter, you're on my Christmas card list. Well done. Okay, folks, let me uh, dive in. Okay, why FTP may be fake? Okay, now, what do I mean by fake? I mean as a score linked to your goals. Okay, linked to your goals. Where are you taking your fitness? Now, Let's just put it into two camps. Fitness for general fitness. Hey coach, I'm not going to race. I'm not going to do any events other than maybe a couple of little sporties, but maybe group rides with my friends, but maybe, I'm not too sure. I just want to improve my fitness from where I am today. And then the other camp, hey, there's an event. I don't care if it's a 100 mile challenge or it's a national time trial championships. There is an event, an event that requires development of a specific energy system. Yeah, a specific training zone. Okay, now remember we talk about energy systems in the body. Remember that podcast? There's three of them, 10 seconds, then about two minutes, and then the rest of your life and how we move through them. And we move through them in our training zones. And our power, once we create our FTP, some of you may be working with what? Five zones, six zones, seven zones, eight zones, three zones. There are different formulas. Everything above FTP, or threshold. What is threshold? Does anyone know? Let's call it the level 
whereby you remove lactic acid at the same rate it is being produced. Agreed? How do we know what the fuck that is, coach? Have I got to put a needle in my arm in it? You can. There's guesswork, isn't there? This is why genetics, your level of fitness, your age, your present health are all going to have an effect on your body's ability to resist the increase in lactic acid. So anything above that threshold, FTP, whatever level you want to call it, is going to be VO2, isn't it? It's going to be VO2. So for most people, a 20-minute test is VO2 test. Yeah, imagine doing a 20-minute VO2 test. Wow. Okay, so that's where it is. Everything below is going to be aerobic. Yeah, so... Have that in in your head. If we go to the lab and we can measure lactate at these different levels, we can then see the build-up and that point whereby the rise is greater than the removal. That's a key point, isn't it? And that is the point we want to change. Agreed? We want to be able to ride for longer at a faster speed before that removal and production tips and balance in favour of the, the production, and we can't remove it. So it's like going out with a hole in your boat. Water comes into your boat, but you're quite comfortable that you can remove the water at the same speed it's coming in, or even a little bit more. But there will come a point when the hole gets too big, you sink, and, well, disastrous. That's what happens with our fitness, isn't it? Now, if the hole goes from small to very big, in a short period of time, boom, you sink really quick, don't you? Got it? So the, the, the intensity, the feel, okay, the RPE of the effort is really important. Got that? You still with me? I promise I am trying to make this simple and stay with me for fun and enjoyment as we go along. <laughs> okay, so that's FTP. We would do it with lactate in the lab. There are some riders, one very famous rider, who didn't quite hit what we call OBLA, the onset of blood lactic accumulation in the lab. Yeah. You can put your uh, guesses of who that rider was from the 90s and the early 2000s uh, in the comments. Right, okay. Control the variables. Right, so I'm going to come back to why I think it's fake for a lot of people. So think of the term test. Think of how you perform the test. Think of what the number means to you. Okay, be honest with yourself. You don't have to comment. And why? I'm going to introduce why it might be fake. Now, I want you to think of the variables. I looked at a couple of videos today with some very uh, popular channels. One of them, uh, GCN. Anybody who, I'm not I'm not asking you to piss off and go and watch them. It's a very good uh, channel. But I watched one video and there was a very clear Uh, avoidance of some of the metrics in terms of variables that are key to doing a test when we go into the lab. And a lot of these guys will have tested in a lab. One of them is the difference between doing the test indoors and outdoors. Now, most people know this, okay? If we do outdoors, it's better. A pro may do it on an incline, 2 to 4%, boom, okay? This incline will increase the torque through the crank, therefore it's power, isn't it? So you're able to put out an extra wattage. There's an angling of the foot as well. There's lots of things in there. But the thing that nobody ever mentions is, is it seated or standing? Okay, we should be doing all tests seated. And this goes to the fat for fuel. A couple of people have said to me, hey, can I do the short efforts seated or standing? That's different. We're not testing. I'm trying to elicit a high lactate response in a short period of time and empty your muscle cell. But in a test, unless... It's a peak power test and we're doing a sprint test over six seconds. It's a seated. However, when we go outdoors and we go and it's tempting to to stand up. But if you think coming from a bike fitter background, the activation through the pedal stroke is going to change greatly. The loading through the pedal is going to change greatly with mass rather than muscular force as well. So sit down, okay? You don't often see people mentioning that. Now, indoors and outdoors has another massive variable that's rarely mentioned, and that is temperature. You need to try and keep temperature the same to control the variables between tests, because I promise you, it will have a big effect on your heart rate. And people often say, have a fan. I would say, have two. If you can stretch it and you've got the room for it, get two fans on you. 
One downstairs, one upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Or both on areas of flesh to keep you cool. Okay. Other variables. Time of the day. I like, well, in my prime a long time ago, I would do a lot of testing around times that a lot of racing happened, which was usually between 8 and 10 a.m. <laughs> in the morning. Uh, so that was a time... Now, when I was young, yes, I could jump out of bed like a young spring chicken. See the Scotsman fly out of bed. Look at him like a gazelle. Now I get out of bed like fucking Quasimodo. Okay, it's a bit different, okay? But anyway, that's important. Now, things like tyre pressure and whether the day's got a fucking S in it or that, you know, you, you can keep the variables as long as you've got the main ones uh, set up. Th that's important because it can make a big difference. Some of you who follow me when we do the live workouts, when I have no fan and I turn the temperature up, and we'll do that this autumn, look at the change in the heart rate. It goes through the roof, even at uh, low intensity for me. So, big, big thing, okay? Now, so, test, think of the word. <laughs> it's, like, it's like being a kindergarten coach. Think of the term test. It's the, the emotions it's creating. Think of your last test. Oh my God, do I have to? What are you using it for? What does that number mean to you? Okay. Think about it. Uh, think about, you know, how you've controlled variables. Have you flip, flitted between different types of tests? Obviously, there are the two times eight minutes, whereby we take average of that score. There is the three minute test. I've used that myself. Uh, you know, the more experience we can get, we can do shorter tests. Now, the tests use a lot of language, mainly maximal. You've heard that before. Uh, hard. As hard as you can go. Yeah? Familiar? What about... Sorry, I wanted to show you this one first. What about if I was to say the difference between psychology versus physiology? Or the difference between fitness and training? Let's have a, 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 a little diver into that. F the difference between fitness and training. Do you understand that term? Is that something that you've never thought before? Why are you training? We've talked about this before. Oh, oh I just want to improve my fitness coach. Okay. Wh why do you keep training? Have you got an answer for that? What's the difference between fitness and training? I is there a difference? Is it the same thing? Am I just trying to confuse things? Why would I say continually on this channel that many people treat a test as a psychological response? Well, that's automatic response, surely, coach. You've just told me to do a ramp test, have an idea of where my FTP is, and then use that number as a baseline to set a 20-minute test. I'll let you into a little secret if you don't know already. For the majority of people, the ramp test will predict a much higher score. And this is down to mainly your DNA and the type of athlete you are, okay? But we won't dive into that in this, you know, certainly feel free if you're a little bit more experienced and you've had trouble with that. Send me an email. I may do a little uh, video on that when I do the next video about the different types of testing that I've done. Uh, think about that, okay? You know, what am I getting from this test? What does he mean psychological rather than physiological? What does he mean fitness rather than training? Okay, so I, I want to take you back to say your first ever test or how you term your fitness. So you, you're, you're having a medical, you're having a questionnaire, you may be seeing your local practitioner, your, your nurse, your doctor, your consultant, your priest, your postman, whoever the fuck you share information with, right? And they say, how are you? And you have that automatic bullshit response. I'm fine. When really, you're not. But somebody was to say to you, uh, how's your fitness? It's okay, could be better. Normal response, bullshit, yeah? Not being honest with ourselves, not having high self-esteem about the hard work we're doing. But if somebody was to say to you, you know, how would you rate your fitness on this questionnaire, Mr. McLean? You know, this is important for your insurance at work. Is it is it shit? Is it better than shit? Or is it average? Is it better, you know, and they start making sort of lots of them. Think about it. How you would define it. Can you define it? Or do you compare it with others and say, mm, it could be better. It's not as good as his. It's better than that. Now, what if I was to say to you 
There are a lot of athletes, especially beginner athletes, they will fall foul of the online concierge, i.e. Zwift or Trainer Road, in that they will allow them to tell them what their fitness is via a number, FTP. My fitness is 256 watts. What the fuck does that mean? Okay, right? Now, FTP is really important, but is it a defining metric that tells you how fit you are? Does it? I hear lots of people say to me, hey, if I had an FTP of 300, I can hell, my wife might not leave me. What? <laughs> no, it's kind of, when you think about it, how do we define fitness? Well, fitness is their ability to meet the, need, the needs of the environment. To meet the needs of the environment. That means get out of bed, unaided, okay? Walk down the stairs if you have any. Get out the house. Function in your society without breathing out your arse. So, everybody has a level of fitness. The trouble when it comes to cycling, you enter that small bracket of athlete. And it's very difficult to compare numbers of VO2 that your Garmin or your Apple's giving you because it's comparing with the general public. And then you fall into that, oh, I'm always looking for more. But FTP is not a fitness number. Okay, it's, it's not a fitness score, right? It will be a metric that will allow you to gauge if you've got fitter, but it cannot give you a fitness score. No, that comes from numbers lower down, believe it or not. And we'll talk about that in a second. But how many of you have done a fitness test, FTP test, uh, and you kind of fall into the same numbers? You've maybe been doing them for years and... It, it doesn't change. I could do a ramp test for the next five years and it would go down. Okay? It, it would go down. Basically because a ramp test will rely, the more I do it, on my absolute power along with my VO2. And as I get older, my absolute power will drop. It will go down. Okay? So, there is a caveat there with some tests. And we'll talk a little bit about investment and return in a second when it comes to FTP linear results. So, is it a psychological or physiological? Do you turn up at your test with the previous number? Of course you do. And how do you relate the experience of the test if the number is not more? Is this a sign that your fitness is lower or have you got any other reasons for it? Because I see people uh, use words like despair, failure. What's the point when FTP numbers go down? But there are so many variables that they have not taken into account when they do some of these tests. And uh, I haven't got enough time to go into them all, but many of them are to do with the warm-up and many of them are to do with how they execute the test, okay? We'll do some warm-ups in the live workouts and some of you will not believe how intense some of the warm-ups are for a short test. And 20 minutes is a fairly short -ish test. It's a fairly shortish effort, okay? Not as short as an eight-minute, not as short as a, as a three-minute, but it's not overly overly long, okay? Right, I'll tie myself up in notes. So, psychological response or physiological, because if it's not a fitness score, what is it, coach? It's a number to hang your training zones off, your training zone zones. So if you get a fake FTP and you elevate the range of your training zones, you may bypass the biological overload point for each zone that may, in effect, drive you closer to lower motivation because of an increase in the catabolic state that you'll find your body in. Basically, you'll just be fatigued more. And you will also switch off common sense and discipline because of the way you want to improve the FTP. So let's say we attack FTP you download a 12-week training plan. Now, a good plan will attack FTP from the top and from the bottom. There's only two zones, isn't there? One above FTP and one below. 
Yes, we can subdivide them into levels of stress. Anything, the fitter you get below 50% of FTP can be deemed sort of in a recovery level. So the physiological stress, the biological overload on the system may not be enough to cause adaptation, i.e. your body's got strong enough. So that ability to remove lactic acid as it builds up, it's too strong. There's nothing getting in, okay? It's too strong. Now, as we move higher and we get into that, say, that 60 to 65%, which I'm going to be talking a lot more over the next weeks, then we start to have this slow buildup of lactic acid. We're still able to remove it, but it's at a very low level. So this causes biological stress. Yeah, it causes a physiological adaptation. The heart rate's a little bit higher than what it would be normally. Therefore, it's low level. Some people, it may be medium stress, depending on where they are with their journey. And this needs to be removed. And this will cause a small level of adaptation. This will have a big effect on the aerobic system, etc., etc., cardiovascular system, mitochondria, all that. Now, I've done plenty of talk on that. And again, I'm not here to go through all the physiological, but there is that. Everything above FTP, we're going to deem VO2 max. We can get very clever with VO2 max workouts. But everything above FTP has that umbilical cord with intensity, drive, sweat, hard work, no pain, no gain, all that, the usual. Okay? Everything below feels too easy, coach. I don't feel as if I've justified my time. I've only got four hours a week. I need to work harder to create the stress. Okay? Fair enough. But think about when you come to do the test. Okay? Think about the approach to get the number. If the number is too, uh, let's say, 20 minutes, and I said, let's say it's slightly, it's a hard effort above that point of removal of lactic acid, which it really has to be. It's a VO2. For many people, it becomes more of an anaerobic response. But yet we're trying to hang aerobic zones off of an anaerobic response. Now, I know I'm getting a little bit complex. I'm going to make this simpler over the next few weeks. But can you see where I'm going? Just because, yeah, I pushed and I got that higher FTP, one watt, two watts. I might have upset the apple cart on the zoning because by attacking FTP from top and bottom has got its merits and it is required but where are the greatest gains? They're going to come from downstairs. They're going to come from the foundation, the cardiovascular system, the cardiovascular network, the level of activation in mitochondria, the landing sites, hemoglobin, all these things. However, Think of FTP as moving all the zones up. Very few people actually drill in and try and dial in to zone two. Where is my zone two limit? That is the level I want to ride at. It is far too easy to go above it because you can. The riders that make the most gains with FTP are the riders that move their zone two. Their zone two level at that point, higher and higher and higher. You'd be amazed at some of the figures for a professional athlete where zone two sits at, never mind FTP. Okay, so think about going back to the test. You approach the test. Is your thinking, the better the number, the better my fitness. I'll move my levels up. Sure, that's true. But think about your zones. Think about where you are training. Think about the value. And have you ever done a workout based on an increased FTP, uh, sorry, based on a, a zone five, and you just can't hold it. What's happening to your training is probably that your FTP is in the wrong area. Now, come on, coach, get to what you mean in terms of how to perform the test, okay? Let me actually show okay. you. King Scott. <laughs> sorry, did you hear that? <laughs> King Scott, that's my watch talking to me. I didn't do that. My daughter set that up as that name. <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me just turn off. I don't want to show you that one yet. Okay, let me show you this. All right, I want to show you two three-minute tests. So these are two tests that I've had uh, data from uh, using 
uh, one of the metabolic testings we do. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second. I want to look at both of them. Okay, there's Rider 1, Rider 2. They're both three-minute tests. Okay, three-minute being a test where we can work out uh, max aerobic uh, power, okay? So if you look at this first test, it starts really high. You can see the, the power on the left-hand side here, and it drops, plateaus, and then it rises. And then on test two, uh, Rider 2, you can see the power starts very high, and it continues to decline. So these are two extreme versions of a test. This could be any test. It could be eight minutes, six minutes. Uh, we do 12-minute testing as well, and we do 20-minute testing. This could be anyone's test. I want you to think about your last test. Picture it in your head. Did you look at the graph? Maybe you did it on Zwift and you got a graph. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you've got trainer training peaks, maybe on Strava, and you looked at your average power. How did it look? Because way, way, way back in the time that land, no, in the land that time forgot, I nearly forgot what I was talking about. We'll come back to that in a second. When we did tests, I want you thinking about some of you may be involved in statistics and analysis. Data had to be pretty clean, okay? And I don't mean that uh, that in a physical sense, that it, you know, COVID regulations, you know, it had to be very clean. It had to be clean in terms of numbers. And what we mean by it is if you look at any fitness test, any 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 20 minute test, it talks about max effort. It does mention sustainable effort. But what's a sustainable effort? Do you know what that means? I don't know, coach, what I can do. This is the usual, I find. I don't know how hard to go at. Okay, fair enough. But then it becomes a behavioural response. But you do the ramp test, you get a number, then you do two, three days later, do the 20 minute test and, and start with that number. If ramp tests will normally predict higher, it's the best place to start. Now here's the trouble. This is where it becomes a fake FTP. So where are we? We're, you know, into the video well and truly now. And this is where it becomes fake because you approach it in a psychological way rather than a physiological way. Sure, you start physiological. Remember I said there's three energy systems and they're always working. Your first one, boom, 10 seconds, gone. Next one, you've got about two minutes. However, in that one, you're producing a shitload of lactic acid. So you don't want to stay in it too long. You want glycolysis to kick in, but it can take two, three, four minutes depending on your fitness. So most people may follow a standard warm-up. And I've seen some of these warm-ups. They are less than the length of the time. If you do a 20-minute test, you need to do a 40-minute warm-up. Minimum. Okay? Minimum for many people. Now, if you're young, you know, and you're, you know, in your 40s and you're some young kid. <laughs> yeah, you fucking 40-year-olds. Yeah, who do you think you are? Yeah, new kids on the block. You 30-year-olds, you might as well just go back to school. What have you got? Paper rounds in the morning. Yeah? <laughs> you're not a real man unless you're 50. Two. <laughs> But what I mean is, it takes us a long time to activate. And many people will be deactivated before they start their test. Let's think about this, common logic, okay, for a warm-up. You've got around 12 to 20 minutes from the point of peak power or peak heart rate that you want to attain in the test. This is common knowledge about how to test, say, warm-up for a test or a, a time trial or an event. Let's say your threshold heart rate is 160, like me. 160, 161, 162. So in the warm-up, can we get ourselves to at least a couple of percent of that? 155 and above, hold that? Because unless we have turned the oven on to the temperature we then want it to, to perform very, very soon, it becomes very difficult. And it's linked to the switch on of glycolysis. Many people preserve life. They preserve energy. So they hold back. Ooh, I don't want to warm up. I'm just about to do a test. So in the first few minutes, you go out like fucking Ben Hur on a chariot <laughs> and you're through the roof. You go anaerobic. Bosh. You have to drop it back down. Oh, it was like having three Viagras, coach. I didn't know what had come over me. <laughs> 
and you bring it back down. So you end up very much like Rider 1. Fucking Jesus Christ. Lower it down and then suddenly you see the finish line and you can aspire to find more power. You get an inconsistent effort. That is a common test. That test should be ripped up and thrown out and excluded from your data fields. Okay, because it will give a fake FTP. Now, you might shout at me and say, but actually, it's an average coach. And when I take away the top and the bottom and it levels itself out, it is the same. The end of the test was an anaerobic effort that had you breathing out your ass like you wished there was no fucking end. You know, it was unbelievable. Okay? That shows strength. You're a warrior. It wasn't a consistent effort. The best test is to start and finish at a lower power. There is nothing you can find at the end. And there is no point to push it at the end. There is no point at that level to push it beyond something that you cannot sustain. Sustainable effort. FTP becomes an accurate score for then hanging the lower zones and the higher zones. It almost becomes something that you could hold for 40 to 60 minutes. Wow, imagine that. Now, depending on your goals, remember I mentioned that? Oh yeah, way back, coach, about 40 minutes ago. Let's say you're a 20 minute, uh, 10 mile time trialist. That becomes really important to you at that level. So it doesn't really matter uh, what you can ride for 40 minutes because you're all about 20. Maybe you're just trying to improve your general fitness. There are lots of permutations. So please don't shout at me. Uh, if it doesn't fit your story. I'm trying to help people perform a better test, get a better accurate score, but to remove themselves from the psychological baggage that the number has in terms of your identification that it's the only means of fitness that you have. And if this number is lower, then you are nothing but a wasteful wanker on a bike, sweating away for no use. Because... If you are of a certain vintage, you are fighting to maintain fitness, which is an incredible success story. Not necessarily improve it, but we'll talk about gains and returns in a second. So, if I go back to the tests, it's quite hard to do that because most people will find an improvement at the end. When you see the finish line, you will. So I'll give you that a little bit, but this was a pro rider, okay? So that's out hard and just hang on, hang on. Everything is depleting. Do you want to see my test? Oh, yes, please, coach. I did one last week. Okay. Let me just open this. So, yeah, 6th of September. Okay, 20 minutes. Now, why am I showing you it? Well, it's no great numbers. 261 watts. 20 minute at 275 OK, which I'm pretty pleased with because I haven't ridden my bike for a, quite a while. Uh, I haven't done much training. So it just shows now any of you who follow me for a while, you're probably thinking you were 260 watts before, coach. Yep, I'll fluctuate between that and it can go up as high as 300 and I can race even higher than that. Now, what I want to show, though, is my power line. Does this make me a snooty, goody two-shoes, top-of-the-class coach? You bum suck. You've got your tongue up Missy's bottom. Can't say that coach on YouTube. Sorry. But what I'm getting at is I'm experienced enough and I know where I felt my power was at. And I know that there's no great gains to be pushing at the end. I couldn't anyway, but it would falsify my data. And the reason I can do this is because I will use other tests and other software analysis that will not like it, will throw the, the, the test out. Because for me, the goal is where does my zone two and zone three sit? I want to know that because I will move my FTP from the bottom up over the autumn and winter with little sprinkles of VO2 max from the top down. I will do probably zero workouts at threshold. Did you hear that? I'll probably do zero intervals at 260 to 275 over the next few months. Okay, the reason being that at that level, I have to, tr have to ride for anywhere between 
8 to 15 minutes to get an adaptive response to a few of those means my old body, ulcerative colitis digestive system, needs much longer to recover. So for me, there are no gains in doing workouts like that. I'll get progress, but for me, is that you? There is no gain for me to do it. I would rather have regular touch points, shorter workouts, and be dialed into the workout, recovery, workout, rather than guessing I fucking rinse myself on a threshold effort. I am going to probably ride a few time trials and a lot of odd axes. Yes, new little venture, vlogging on the 200 kilometer rides, okay? But your story is your story, okay? So it, it impacts on you what the number represents in terms of your training zones. My point is, get it right. So unless you can do start to finish within about 10 to 15 watts or decrease the end from the start, you've got it wrong, okay? So sometimes it does take experience and that's why I'm saying do a RAM test first. You need no pre-knowledge of your fitness. Get a number, start at that, you're definitely going to finish lower than that, not higher, okay? But it's having that uh, courage to get out Hold it, bosh. Now, let's go back to the term test. The word test, does it conjure up fear, despair, anxiety? You don't like doing it, you avoid it because it's it's hard, okay? That's why, okay? You've probably made it a lot harder than what it is. We see people, I looked at a few videos today, people doing FTB and they're all over the bike and they're thrashing and they're screaming and it's almost like everybody wants a fucking medal. Everybody wants a pat on the back. Match, well done. Great score. Your fitness is fantastic. It's a test to hang zones. You've got to then go and do the work. Okay? It's like getting the job. Yes, I got the job. Oh, shit. Now I've got to do the work. <laughs> You've got to do the work. Okay? You've got to do the work that's correct. So when I say anyone can train hard, there's only a few of us can train smart. My God. This is a classic example. Okay? People are always looking for hacks. Try this FTP test, try that. And I've showed a few other versions. The more experience you get, you can use your training to gauge your FTP. Now imagine doing submaximal testing. Can you imagine that? What does that mean, coach? We need to do a whole video on that because that is very powerful. Using submaximal testing at say 70% of your VO2 uh, or, or your VO2 based on your FTP and looking at heart rate responses over particular times. How far can you ride? I do some great challenges on distances that can be achieved indoors at no more than X power. How far can you go before your heart rate hits the alarm bell? That's a true test of your ability to remove lactic acid because your heart rate is your internal metric. It is your internal Temperature gauge is your internal response to the build-up of carbon dioxide. You're breathing, you're, all these things. Very few people do that. And it, you don't have to be incredibly creative. How often should you do FTP tests? I might do them twice a year. That's it. Okay. And I'll change it as I do other tests. Want to find out about them? Well, my next test I'm actually doing tomorrow. So I am. And here's what it looks like. Okay. It's actually four tests. Some of you may have done similar tests. This. So I'm going to do an anaerobic response, 20 seconds. So to do this properly, you must ride as hard as you can. Empty the cell inside five to seven seconds. End that energy system in about 10 seconds. And then for the last 10 seconds, hold on for sheer life. Your power will decrease. And uh, this will give me an anaerobic response. And then you then you double up. You do a three-minute test, a six-minute test, and then a 12-minute test. Now, I've obviously got an FTP guidance that I can use for 20 minutes. I can ride 275 to 280 for 20 minutes at the moment. So I'll, I'll use that as a guidance. But these tests, two of them, I'm not going to say what two, are key pinners, so they're key prime tests to measure my metabolic response. What is that? 
That is my point of carbohydrate and fat usage. Where that changes, that's critical for my zone two, isn't it? Because this is going to have a big part of my base building. Oh, I've trained for 30, 40 years. I don't need to build any more base. That's rubbish, okay? There is more to be done because it will it will peak and trough, right? Now, there will also be a VO2 score. Now, what each one will do, rather than create an FTP critical score that I will then percentage for all my levels, I can create accurate numbers as I move through the different zones, okay? So I can create FTP in theory for each zone. I'm going to go through how I can do this. Some of you may have heard of these guys and obviously I'm a coach with them. So I can turn that crazy science into digestible information. But yeah, you may be interested. I'm going to, I'm going to, my attempt uh, to do this test is tomorrow. I would have done it on Saturday, just past, but the sunshine came out in Scotland. I couldn't be fucked missing out on uh, getting out in the sunshine. <laughs> it was great stuff. Now, I want to talk about uh, training investment and FTP profits, okay, before we finish up. I want to make it quite clear that whatever your FTP, let's say you've done your first FTP, let's say you've done your 50th FTP test. The returns on your investment, and your investment is time, intensity, energy, all these things. You know, a very valuable resource that we all have is time. Okay, we want to fill our time doing things that we want to do, bring us joy, bring us happiness, all that stuff. So you're a time. Now, the linear approach to an FTP gain is, you know, it's a unicorn science. It doesn't exist. There is no linear approach. Maybe you've been doing tests unactivated. Maybe you've been doing tests with such a short warm up. Maybe you've been doing tests with no controllable variables. Okay, maybe you've been doing tests and actually building up levels of anxiety. You should be having a positive mindset for a test because on the last revolution of the last second at the end of the test, enlightenment will come in that figure. No matter what that figure is, that's your training zones. Bosh, I can get excited because now I have the template to work. Now I have the map to find the treasure. Rather than putting a test off because you feel as if your fitness is not in the right place to do a test. What the fuck is all that about? I hear this a lot from people. I'm not fit enough to do a test. Mm. Okay, physiological or a psychological test. Think about what it is. Have you ever tried the blind test? We've talked about it before. Time, cadence. Don't look at power. Go and feel. Yeah, you'll be amazed at how accurate your power is by not seeing the numbers. Yeah, try it. It's pretty clever. Don't do a RAM test like that because you need to see the power. But you can try a 20 minute like that. We do that in the lab. Yes, sir, we do. Very good test. Okay. But the returns. So what will happen is the gains in FTP will start to drop. They'll start to change. They'll get closer and closer. And then maybe you'll hit a point whereby, do you know what? I think I'm at that point of no return. This is where you need to reinvent train, training. You need to fragment your training. I've talked about fragmentation of training before, about how we change direction, how we change workouts, how we, we change approaches, because we have to break the pattern and create. Did you like that? Break. I heard myself sounding more Scottish by the second there. You have to break that pattern and create a new mindset, create a different directional path than where you've been going with your training. Do the same, get the same. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, very famous person said that. Yes, I know, it was Einstein, not me. (laughs) Okay, so very important to do that, okay? So understand that your fitness is more of a feel. How's it relating to your health? How's it relating to your productivity at work and relationships, friends, your social interaction? Is your training making you a miserable old bastard? Is it making you grumpy, moody? You're losing motivation. Think about where you're going. And is it all centred around this one number? Your whole life, your whole identity, your whole meaning, your whole purpose, everything is about this number. Life will change if I can improve this number. It will never change with this number. 
One thing I look at very closely uh, is impacting on my number. So he, here's an example before I give away that. I'll save that for another time. My 275, 280 for 20 minutes. Give me a power to weight of what? 4.3, 4.4 watts per kilogram for 20 minutes. Great coach for a 52-year-old guy. That's pretty fantastic. The only events available to me really at my age, racing-wise, are time trials. I have got the absolute power of Popeye's girlfriend. What was her name? Olive. So a time trial, unless I can get my position really dialed in, which I can most times, my optimum is going to be around about, you know, I'm not going to give some times because you'll probably say, oh, you're being a dick because I couldn't get anywhere near that time. But what I'm saying is I'm not physiologically suited, for, but I like events. I like racing, so I do it. But I know there is a limit to what I can do. But put me on a heli course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. You know, if I can ride four watts per kilogram even at the moment for an hour. Yeah. Against other people my age. Yeah, I'll do okay. It doesn't matter, but you've got to pull out and tease out numbers that help you, okay? Help you rationalise where your fitness is. One thing that I would like to finish off in saying is this. If you can move your zone two, then, I mean, you're going to transform your fitness. You're going to transform your training, your mindset, your enjoyment of cycling. it just change. You'll go faster for longer. You'll be better at fueling, better at hydration. You'll just understand a lot more and your body gets so much better, at recovery, okay? It'll go through the roof. But what you've also got to understand is if you are in that aging half century generation with me, you do need longer to recover. You cannot do the same as what you did even maybe a year ago than what you're doing now. And when we start off our training programme again, if we've had any layoff from illness or injury, we've got to give it time. Go and check out the, the video I did, the 42-day 42, the 42 rule to activate the system. I think I've covered quite a lot there. So is your FTP fake? It is fake if you've done a very inconsistent effort. You've finished higher than what you started. You've dropped it and all over. Go back. Next test you do, try and set yourself a limit. Hey, is that not what ERG mode's for, coach? Of course it is. I'm not a fan of ERG, okay, because ERG will make it... Uh, not unrealistic. It is very good for training, but testing, you want to feel it. You want to develop that feel, okay? I'm going to stick my glasses on uh, so that I can see if there's any questions. Let me just look at the last few folks. Really, uh, I do appreciate everybody that stayed. That was tough going to listen to, wasn't it? It wasn't great. FTP is one of those subjects. I could talk about it all day, but I'm very interested in the human response, the behavioral response. Anybody that's so attached to the number needs to let go. Yeah, you need to go and just make a little bit of paper, write 300 watts in it, put it in a little boat, set fire to it and send it out to sail. Salute. And then just say, you know, I'll see you again when I'm ready to properly test. <laughs> yeah. Valhalla to the FTP. FTP, feel the power, not fuck the power. Yeah, that's a t-shirt. Let's go for it, folks, yeah? Feel the power, not fuck the power. You've got to do it, okay? You've got to understand that there are ways and means. Don't let the ego uh, force that number, okay? And don't feel deflated. I hate this, getting messages from people who are upset. I didn't improve my FTP. And then you look at the warm-up. It was seven minutes long. You're thinking, what the fuck were you doing? Yeah. You've got to change that type of behaviour. You've got to understand that the body takes time to warm up, yeah? I was going to make a reference to foreplay and sex there, but again, I cannot do that on this channel. I will get into too much trouble. Yes, I know what you're going to say the older I get, coach. Yeah, foreplay is what golfers do. <laughs> Not me, okay? Right, folks, please keep in touch. Let me, let me jump through some questions. Hey, Keith, hey, Peter, thank you. Sybil Spencer Hilton, did I say that right? Are you related to, oh, that's a very lovely name, informative, very interesting and useful coach. Thank you. I, I would say send me an email. I would like to know more about your name. I love it. I love it. 
uh, Tommy knocked it off. Tommy, thank you. I've not, have you been on Tommy before? Uh, for a while, not heard from you for a while. Hey folks, that reminds me with Tommy on there. Patreon Q&A this Wednesday. If you haven't got the email link, please send me a message and I'll pop it across. Get your questions across. We're going live at six o'clock, I think. British summer time. Hey, Franz, what do you think about WK05 uh, MTV? Good. Uh, we should do a video about that, uh, Franz. It can work very well if you... You can certainly uh, gauge in terms of routes. Uh, very good for time trialists if we can pre-plan. The work I'm going to show you with Instinct, we can create estimations of future valuations based on training in terms of power changes and weight loss. It's a clever software piece that I want to sort of make accessible to you, but I'm more interested in sharing the metabolic responses at lower level. Oh, people, before I forget as well, watch out. I'm going to be sharing information on the, the Breakaway app. Some of you may know it from the Garmin guys. Uh, so from uh, the work I've been doing with Christian van der Velde, we're going to talk about the breakaway app. I'm interested in the kilojoules, the calories, how to make sure people are well fueled pre, during, post. Because number one foul approach to training is when we're developing our zone two, people don't fuel enough. We get mixed up and we treat fueling like weight loss. We train for fitness, we eat for weight loss. Cross the two over and you're fucked, okay? You've got to be careful on that. So watch out for that. Great little app. Give me some time to use it because it works with Zwift, Garmin, does have Wahoo, but a lot of my workouts went into Watt Bike and I've got to make sure they go through Zwift, okay? So even some of my Patreon people, remind me, link Watt Bike to Zwift. Otherwise, I'm losing all that data that I want to share with you. Thank you very much. Larry, have you found that running helps to improve FTP, especially hill climbing? I introduce runs into my training going by feel. Well, Larry, there is no other way to run. You have to run and feel because you can't freewheel. And I think running, if you can do it, will act... Oh, sorry, my microphone, that'll deafen people. Running will activate more muscles, so we'll have higher heart rates, therefore stimulate, you know, bigger cardiac output responses from the heart and can help the cardiovascular system. There only is one cardiovascular system, so running can help cycling. Why? Because you have to run normally around VT1, because if you go too fast, you have to walk, because you can't freewheel. You can't just switch off an effort that you've gone too fast. So it is a great exercise to mix training up. However, however, there is a caveat with it, that especially if we're older and we take up running, the chances of injury are huge. Especially people who have cycled a long time because your foot pattern is, is different and loading up, etc. So please, with caution. But Larry, if it works, well done. And FTP is a marker of your zones and it will help because it will help your cardiovascular system, okay? Let me go back through a few messages. Jeff, da -da, hi. Is this really live, non-stop talking for an hour? I'm sorry, Lex. Yeah. It's not everybody's cup of tea. I know that. And I do have people just switch off. But hey, we're going to do some interview style uh, chats as well. I don't understand YouTube, right? And I'm getting better at it. But hey, we're creating a little community here. One that's going to cut through the bullshit. We're not going to be taking on huge big brands. I'm not going to be selling you shit. And I mean, I get requests daily, okay? daily. All sorts of fucking requests. Like, stuff not related to cycling. I should do a video in some of the shit I get. Somebody wanted me to advertise women's clothing. Seriously? Now, I was tempted. I've had this message quite a number of times. It referenced me as name. Now, have I been doing something that I shouldn't be doing? Or have I been caught? Has my webcam been on when I've been up to things? Hmm, yeah. Okay, folks. I really do appreciate, as I said, how many have we got on? 137 people, 63 likes. Do you not like me that much? If you stayed on for this, why have you not hit the like button? As everybody says on YouTube, you've got to like pump it on. Click it. It's that fucking thing that looks like a thumb, okay? 
It's down the bottom there. Hey folks, what do you want to see coming up? I want to talk more about my test. Are you interested in that? See my my results? I was going to live stream it as well, but it's an hour and a half long. <laughs> Be more interesting than you talking, coach. Hey, we've got some more interviews coming up. I'm going to speak to Christian again. We're going to talk a little bit about racing with the, the Garmin team, racing in the Giro, different types of training sessions. This is going to introduce to a few other riders. Mm, yeah, some big names lined up there. But I want to get that right and pitch it in a way that's fun, okay? That's entertaining. Hey, folks, it's been good. As I say, make sure you use my email address if you want. Let me, uh, yeah, you can get my details. Instagram, Facebook. Now, in the Facebook group, it's actually Kinetic Cycle Coaching Community now. Community. I've not changed that on that. And this is where you're going to get most of the content that I'm going to share when I do the test, when I'm sharing new projects, when I'm sharing my course, especially on the Fat for Fuel. So if you're following that, make sure you put an invite. Now, if you don't answer at least one of the questions, you won't get in. The admin people, they just won't do it. They won't read it, okay? They'll just see it not answered. And they won't let you in. It's not some security uh, that you're going to be... I don't spam people, okay? Those of you who are on the newsletter know you'll get one or maybe two emails a month with content, okay? So don't worry about that. Okay, folks. Let me scroll down and make sure I've not missed anything. I know there's lots of comments and I've not gone through everything. But like I say, I've bored people enough. Uh, how do I know how much to fuel for a zone to ride? Lex, that's a good question. Okay. I'm going to put that in a video. You would fuel based on the duration of the ride using the two hour rule as the cutoff point. Your body has enough fuel at two hours. Uh, to service the needs of that ride without fueling. But that's that's on the limit. I would make sure that we'd be fueling during the last half hour of a two-hour ride. If you go over two hours, you've got to be fueling from the get-go and you're looking at anywhere between 20 to 30 grams per half hour, roughly. Okay? Sounds a lot? Yeah. But it is required, okay, to get the max out. And experiment with fueling, okay? I'm going to be talking about some fueling products as well. Oh, yeah. I've been trying a few new ones out. There is one, guys, before I go, that I used at the weekend, and it is by a company called Kendall Mint Cake. Yes, it is an actual energy-producing fuel company. Now, these are natural products, and they produced a protein bar, and I wish I had some to show you. I'm going to do a little chat on that. I'm going to do a whole thing on some of the fueling products. And it's great. It really is. If it works for me, it's going to work for anyone. Okay? It's good. Go and check it out. No, no links, no affiliations. I'm not pushing shit to you. I don't need to. Okay? Okay? Love Meadow Mint Snuff. Yeah. <laughs> Kendall. Kendall Andrew. Okay? Kendall Mint Cake, my friend. Yeah, it's very, very good. Now, if you get hold of there, they do an energy bar that's very minty with chocolate on the side. I mean, it's like fucking crack cocaine. It's got so much sugar on it. I mean, like, forget Viagra. You'll be like a bloody, uh, what do they say? Uh, a German shepherd with an elastic band around its cock. <laughs> you'll be, you'll be, I mean, this stuff is, it's amazing. I've got a little packet of it in my saddlebag. It's over there and I'm keeping it for emergencies only. Uh, and I'm going to give it, I know the very person I'm going to give it to because I mean, it's going to give them the shits straight away. So I'm going to wait for when I'm out in a ride with them uh, and then uh, make sure that when they're tired, I'm going to give them it and watch their face. Uh, okay, folks. Training with heart rate video, please. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about that in my Pod, uh, my chat on Wednesday because I've had a lot of questions about that. Uh, how about dates as in to use as a fuel product? Yeah, I think that's what that means. Yeah, very good. As we all know, currants, raisins, dates, they have got good levels of natural sugar. Something that personally I don't promote because it's something that doesn't agree with me because of my bowel and a colon disease, it's 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 a bit too tough for me. So it's something that's not high up. Okay, what's my favourite thing at the moment? As always, honey. 
Okay, I drink the stuff. Okay. Right, yeah, 95. I'm staying on, folk, until that like button goes to 100. So you're going to have to put up with me. I'm going to be just going through some questions. Yeah, those of you who are on Catch Up, I'm sorry. Uh, but these people have uh, sat and listened to me. And uh, pros and cons of different tests would be good to understand also about how to train zone two levels. Matthew, exactly. Because if we can move zone two, so the testing, as long as we can do the test right, what I'm asking for is a consistent effort. So whether you do the 20 minute or the two times eight, the ramp test will give you, as I say, an indication. It is normally higher than what your FTP is. And I don't like that, okay? If it's too high, it generally makes the zone two a little bit too high, okay? Now, remember, it's a zone. How many of you do this, okay? How many of you do this that if you're given a range through, say, Zwift, you, you work to the upper range all the time, okay? It, it, it's just a natural thing. It's psychological, isn't it? If I don't work at the upper end of the range, I'm getting weaker. The, there's no difference. There's very little difference in some of the workouts that you do. I want to talk more about my increased touch points, my layering of the cake. Let's take two key workouts a week, essential. They may only be 40 to 60 minutes long, and let's layer up your time with more touch points rather than finding an extra hour and sticking it onto your long workout. Have you ever heard about recruiting fresh fibres from short workouts? As you get fitter, you know that the four or five hour ride is needed to fatigue the key fibres. However, at certain levels of low carbohydrates in the blood, we can recruit fresh fibres without long workouts because your brain wants to find efficiency. Yeah, we talk about that. Okay, folks, we've hit 100. Woohoo! Get rid of the coach because I've got to go and watch TV. What are you watching on Netflix at the moment, folks? I've been watching House of Cards. Is that naughty to watch? People say to me, oh, why'd you watch that? Kevin Spacey's in it. I went, I found that uh, anything that goes over about three series, I lose the will to live. Uh, so I go and watch the end of it. That's a psychological problem, isn't it? Now, you're going to hate this, but I love Cobra Kai. The reason being, it is shit, I know that, but I love all that 1980s macho <laughs> one-liner when things were simple. Hey, folks, I'm now talking about crap, okay? We got 100, thank you very much. I'm going to go now, so I'll see you in the next video. Watch out for the workouts, get in the Facebook group, and you'll get more content from me. If you want to see something specific, take your comment, okay, from the chat tonight and get it in an email and get it over to me. I might surprise you and make you the star of the next show, but I would like to hear from you and I will get back to you. I promise you, I will answer it. And if it tickles my fancy, it will make the next show. Hey folks, you take care. Let me get rid of that. I can't bloody see a thing. You take care. Did we increase subscribers? Nothing went off. I had the alert switched on. Maybe I didn't have it switched on. I might have put it off. Okay. Take care. Stay safe. Keep spinning, keep smiling, keep in touch with me, please. I'm here to help you. And I'll see you all in the next chat once I can find the screen. Love you.